Well, it was super early. Woke up at about, I think it was 3 or 3.30 that I got up. And it was at the airport for 4 in the morning, somewhere around there, maybe 5. Either way, it was super early. But it was all right, and I mean, going to Toronto and all. I mean, going from like, you know, the airport here was fine, but as soon as you got to Toronto, it was super, super busy. Everybody's a busy body and you feel that. It's, it's an automatic thing that you get placed in when you're there. It's kind of crazy how that works. Yeah. So we were invited to go to Toronto to celebrate the induction of Kate Carmack into the Canadian Mining Hall of Fame. Kate is the first Indigenous woman to be inducted, as well as only the third woman to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. This is significant, aside from that, for a number of reasons. One of them being she was a part of the group that discovered gold in Dawson City and what started the gold rush in the Yukon, in the Klondike. But she hasn't been recognized for that up until now. Um, we think about the contributions of Kate and I often, you know, reflect on the fact that she's not only a hero, right, but she's also um, had an incredible role in the discovery, so to speak, of um, a huge part of, of the Yukon economy. Thinking about that from a reconciliation perspective, um, you know, the, the question I would say is, how come it took so long? Right, yeah, exactly. uh, and so it's it's really amazing to see you know the visual that that youth in the Yukon um, and really this being pushed from youth, youth recognizing. And so when we're talking about reconciliation, I think it's really important that we look to the young people because I think most often they're the ones who are demonstrating what reconciliation can really be. So we were invited as delegates of the Yukon to attend the induction gala in Toronto, Ontario. Event for the world, for the Yukon, and for my family. 
And women in leadership in the Yukon is a normal and natural thing. And uh, so it's very fitting and I'm proud that uh, the Canadian Mining Hall of Fame has um, chosen to induct her today to um, this, in this prestigious way. And I'm really, really proud of She Can't and the youth for doing this because um, it, it just shows that to me is reconciliation. When our youth are stepping up and they're telling their own stories in their own voice. So I'm a bit emotional because it's, uh, it, it's very special. So I am really honored to be here tonight to be part of this and to, um, to really honor this woman that had such a tremendous impact on the Yukon territory as a well. whole. I think it's it's long time. Uh, you know, as you know, in the Yukon, uh, in you know thousands of years of uh, of, uh, of First Nations uh, being there and, and knowing the land and, and knowing Creator's gifts, uh, and then moving forward to the modern world and being inundated with uh, with the colonialization and with the modernization uh, and, and just the gold rush. Uh, I can't even imagine uh, what culture was like at that time. You know what uh, the communities were like at that time, uh, and to be part of something that uh, you know not just in Canada but North America was such a significant um, uh, experience. Uh, it's just, uh, it's unbelievable. So the recognition, it's, it, to me, as, as I think about this and I was coming down the plane, all I could keep on, keep on thinking about was it's about time uh, for the recognition. Uh, and I think it just means a lot for the whole fact that, you know, First Nations are a lot of maternalistic uh, you know, uh, communities. And uh, so it's, it's great that we're finally recognizing something that uh, has been recognized already by the First Nations for so long. So.